All right, guys, the entire internet has exploded with videos on ChatGPT promising you that you are going to get rich. We just did a video on what ChatGPT can and cannot do, what it should be used for, what it should not be used for, and how you should be uh, either using it or not using it in your business. At that time, we got a bunch of comments asking us for our recommendation on AI apps that we should be using in our businesses right now. Now, pro tip, the moment that 9 billion people worldwide know about something, it's not a secret anymore. Once 9 billion people have access to that, you know, that trick or that hack that's out there, it's not a trick or a hack anymore. So while everybody else is downloading ChatGPT, uh, the app on their cell phone, and asking it for Tinder lines, we are, in our technology company, we are experimenting with real apps and using them in our business so that we can be in an, an advantage as AI uh, becomes more and more prolific. So stick around. I'm going to give you five apps again, that we're using right now, but the very best one by far, I'm going to save for the end. So stick around through the whole video. Uh, before I get started, please give me a like. If you would, hit subscribe and leave a comment so we can keep bringing you more videos. All right, AI app number one that we're using and experimenting with right now is Browse.ai. Browse.ai is a data collection robot. This might be one of the most functional, utilitous, useful apps in, um, developed over the last year. So the way this works is if you log into Browse.ai and you scroll down, you're going to see a URL text box. So you're going to go over to any HTML-based site, any website that you want to search, and you're going to copy the URL. And you're going to paste it into this text box, and you're going to click Start Recording Task. I'm not going to take you all the way through this, but once you finish this and you hit Enter, Browse.ai is going to scrape this in the entire front end of whatever you selected, and it's going to print you a file with all the information you were looking for. So if you need to get information in bulk, in volume, this is a phenomenal, absolutely fantastic, immediately, imminently useful AI app. All right, number two, Mid Journey. We're going to talk about Mid Journey very, very briefly. This is probably one of the coolest AI apps out there. And the way it works is you can either feed it files, uh, photo files, or you can feed it text. So we're going to try feeding it text. And all you want to do is once you sign up for an account, it operates in Discord. You have to have a Discord account. It's going to prompt you to, to download Discord. Once you're in here, you're going to go into one of these newcomer or newbie chat rooms. Once you go in there, there's a text box at the bottom. This isn't intended to be a tutorial, but I just kind of want to show you what this does. You're going to type in the same thing to start every time, forward slash. And you're going to start to type in imagine. Once you do, you're going to see this prompt pop up. You're going to click on it. And you can start typing. In. Forty-four year old man sitting at computer working on YouTube video for top AI apps of 2023. Make it cinematic, horror, uh, horror. All right, we're going to hit enter. Now, once you see your, it will bounce around, so you have to kind of keep an eye on it. Where it go? We're going to we're going to come back up here, and we're going to wait. Now you can see it start to generate an image. 
And it's going to it's going to work through these images. What it's doing is it's referencing tens of thousands, I don't know how many images and it's ma they're making consolidated images. <laughs> well, that's pretty neat. Now, <laughs> that is pretty interesting. Actually pretty useful. Um, I don't know about 44. I'm 44 and, and some of these dudes look pretty, uh, pretty old. But either way, um, it'll generate unique, quote unquote, art. And you can continue to train this by just refining your prompts over and over and over. So if you have any use for art, whether it is thumbnails or anything else, um, you can uh, you can use Mid Journey to create your artwork in seconds. Absolutely revolutionary, um, Mid Journey AI. All right, I am actually going to list Chat GPT, but hear me out. Don't get too angry uh, too quickly. I did say in my last video that this was overused and overpromised, but I also said that there was a um, a time coming when this was going to be absolutely revolutionary. So I want to quick recap what Chat GPT can actually do for you now. Not all the other stuff that everybody else is saying, but if you have something that is uh, like a, uh, you know, sort of a begs a hard response, like an if then f statement or a sum if formula for Excel, some kind of a macro code, something like that, chat GPT does work. Um, you can see on the left hand side here, here's some of the things that I have used it for. You can use it for Excel macros. You can use it for uh, anything creative. You know, if it doesn't need to be super accurate or um, really, really good, like maybe you want a bedtime story for your kids or a greeting card response or uh, a joke or something like that, Chat GPT can, uh, can do it. It does a pretty good job. Now, here's really why I bring this up. If you haven't read Microsoft donated a bunch of money, or not donated, but um, financed chat GPT with a, a large sum of money. And there was a lot of speculation over chat GPT being connected in some way to Bing. Now, if you type into Bing right now, this is really important. you can see that there's this little learn more widget here. And if you click on that, you can see this message that says join the wait list. This is the chat GPT functionality, which is going to be absolutely revolutionary. This is really going to be big. And if it doesn't seem like it is, if you can look at Google as something that can pull up simple information, chat GPT or Bing now, how, however Bing is going to market this, that's not just going to be able to pull up lists of information. It's going to actually be able to do things, do functional things for you. It's going to be able to create unique lists and write for you and uh, all kinds of things. Now, Google has their own app that they've been experimenting with. So the race is on. This is kind of like the new space race. And this is really important. So keep chat, chat GPT up. Um, keep using it. Keep watching it. It is going to be huge. Watch Bing and then watch what Google comes out with uh, to compete with Bing. So chat GPT. All right, Quillbot, this one seems really simple, but it is immediately useful. What Quillbot is, is a paraphraser. So you take some text and you plug it into Quillbot and it'll rephrase it. Now, I would never suggest that you do anything unethical, but if you had a reason to say reference some text and you didn't want to get accused of copying it or something like that, I don't know, I'm not your mom. I'm not the police. If you need to paraphrase, you can take some text and you can dump it into Quillbot. So let's take, let's take the theme song from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. 
let's just take the first two, I don't know what you call that, stanzas, maybe. And we're going to paste it into Quillbot. And we're going to hit Paraphrase. And you can see that we have a completely um, different two verses here. Now, depending on what kind of plan you have, if you have an upgrade, which I don't for Quillbot, you can go in here and um, you can choose different themes to rephrase again. You can also go down here into different words or phrases and uh, select some options to rephrase those. Not necessarily so that not you want to steal somebody's work, but let's just say you want to start with one body of work to get some kind of you know, idea or inspiration for another quill bot is pretty cool. You can also take something that you wrote. If you think it sucks and you don't know how to write, you can put it into, into quill bot and have quill bot rewrite it for you. All right. Last one. This one is really, really cool. Now I cannot log in and show you how this one works, but it is notion dot S O. Now notion has new AI functionality and it is sick. It is bad. There is so much here. Uh, this is going to change everything. But some of the things that Notion is going to be able to do, super cool, extremely useful, translation, note taking, copywriting, blog writing, brainstorming. It can write Twitter posts if you give it some ideas. Uh, it can analyze meeting notes. It can do all kinds of different uh, analysis. It is really, really powerful. This might be one of the most important AI apps to come out or to be released this year, and it probably represents what the future looks like. We're not all going to have a bunch of uh, you know secret apps that we're able to use. We just are going to have access to AI through some of the things, some of the tools that we're already using right now. So again, uh, sign up for the waiting list and get a front row seat to uh, Notion's AI functionality once it is released. Now, just if you can use any of these apps, if you saw anything in these apps that is could be useful to you or your business, I recommend pulling them up in your browser and just experimenting when you can. Instead of taking something and putting it into Google, put it into uh, Notion when it comes out, chat GPT, whatever. If you have a Shutterstock account and you have any reason to download any images, um, instead try using MidJourney. It's not super user friendly, but you can get good at it very, very quickly. All right, guys, those are the five apps that I recommend using right now for your business. If you got any value from this video, please subscribe, give me a like, hit the notifications. And if you want to see anything else, leave me a comment. All right, till next time.